One, one, check one, check one. Can you hear me? One. One, one, one. Okay, push the talk. Oh. Okay. Don't lean into it, don't bury it. This is good. I always say, you know, put these mics like this. Hang loose, okay. Other mics are like this. Thank you. the Cultural and Fine Arts Commission meeting. Uh, today is Tuesday, February 28th, and it is 6.04 p.m. I'd like to convene this meeting, and um, we'll start with uh, the city clerk will do a roll call. Councilor, Commissioner Emerson. You guys all almost got a um, here a um, promotion. Um, Commissioner Kirshner is not here at this time. Um, Chair Hagstrom here. Commissioner Momsen here. Commissioner Schleling yes. Commissioner Small present. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. Um, we're going to first jump back to our city clerk and see if there's any uh, s staff reports. Well, we'll start with the first item if you want to okay. go ahead and just announce that one, Chair Hagstrom. All right. So uh, the first item in the regular meeting is uh, 
the introduction of our newest commissioner, Morgan Momsen. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, Morgan, so welcome. Um, do you have anything to say about yourself that you can introduce to, uh, to us? Okay, I'm from Sonoma, born and raised here. Um, I'm a teacher, fifth grade at El Verano. Um, I'm really excited to be here and looking forward to learning more about what my role will be. Um, yeah, hope, happy to give back to the town. Okay, fantastic. Um, are there any staff questions? No questions, but I can share just a little bit that um, Commissioner Mumson was one of the successful um, applicants and candidates in the most recent uh, recruitment and she was um, appointed directly by Mayor Lowe to the commission. So she were excited to have her and she took her oath prior to the meeting. So with that, we are good to go forward. Perfect. Any questions or comments from the commissioners? No, welcome. Yeah, yeah. I'd just like to say welcome and uh, what are you doing for the next five years? <laughs> okay. All right, with that, we'll end uh, Item number 1.1 and move to 1.2. It's discussion, consideration, and possible action to elect chair and vice chair of the Cultural Fine Arts Commission. Do we have any nominations? I would like to nominate. Is it allowed? Yeah, we typically will do a staff report so, yeah, first sorry. and then sorry. go to nominations. Okay, we will be going to nominations right after this staff report. Uh, our city clerk, do you have any comments? Questions? Yes, as you, the report in your agenda packet stated, um, this is a reorganization that's conducted annually um, by the commission selects their mayor, or here we go again, their chair and their um, vice chair amongst the members that are seated. And the process uh, proceeds as follows. Um, we'll ask for nominations, and you've already done that. so. You'll um, state your, that I nominate. Um, they do not require seconds, um, but other members may express a nomination for someone else. And once all of the nominations are, um, let's see, is that right? Yes. Yes. And then all, once all nominations are done, then um, we'll do a roll call vote and starting with the first nomination. Um, and then that's how that works. Okay. So anyone have any questions about the process? Commissioner? Um, yes, um, before the roll call vote, is there a discussion or an opportunity for discussion? Okay. Yes, the, you guys can, once the, all the nominations are complete, there can be a discussion. There just isn't required in a second. Okay. Any other further questions about the process of nominating a possible chair and vice chair to this commission. Yes, Connie? We, um, we do one at a time, right? Okay. okay. So with that, we'll open up the floor to n any nominations. We'll start with the chair position. Do I have any nominations? Yes. I'd like to nominate Steve Hagstrom for the chair. Okay, nomination received. Is there, are there any other nominations from the commission? Sounds like a great nomination. <laughs> okay, it looks like we have one nomination and that is Steve Hagstrom present. Um, will we take a vote? Okay, is there any discussion about the nomination of myself? Then we'll turn it to the city clerk to ask for a vote. Commissioner Emerson? Yes. Um, Chair Hagstrom? Yes. Commissioner Momsen? Yes. Commissioner Schleling? Aye. Commissioner Small? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Then we'll move to vice chair. Um, does staff have any um input on vice chair nominations? No. So we'll open up the floor for nominations for vice chair. Deb? 
I was going to nominate Commissioner Shailen. Commissioner Sh Shailen has been nominated. Any comments? That sounds great. Okay. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? I'd like to nominate um, Commissioner Emerson. <laughs> We have a second nomination for vice chair. I, I would like to respectfully decline. And a decline. So we have one nomination on the floor. Sorry, I don't. And with that, we'll pass it back to staff to conduct a vote. Commissioner Emerson? Yes. Uh, chair Hagstrom? Yes. Commissioner Momsen? Yes. Commissioner Schleiling? Yes. Commissioner Small? Yes. Thank you. And just to clarify, since there was a second mo um, nomination, that was for Commissioner Schleiling to be the vice chair. And that passed 5 1. One being? Commissioner Kirshner, because she's absent. Okay. Thank the other you. motion should have been the same. Okay. Congratulations. Okay. Um, any other discussions or comments from staff? No? Okay. Then we'll move on to item 1.3, discussion regarding the Cultural Fine Arts Commission's role, responsibilities, and related matters. And this is a, a line item for our city clerk to comment on. Thank you, Chair Hagstrom. So this is this report will look familiar to some of you. Um, it's something we bring out um, each year when we have new commissioners, just a reminder of the role of the commission. Um, the commissioner's responsibilities and roles are set forth in our municipal code. And um, I've taken a just a cut and paste of the different um, items that you're responsible for. Um, the purpose of the commission is to develop, establish a balanced arts and cultural program that promotes, enriches, and advances the cultural and fine arts community. Um, the appointments to this commission, um, as you all know, are um, some, there are five of you that are directly appointed by council members, and two at large, and one alternate. And one member of the commission can be a valley, um, someone who lives in Sonoma Valley School District. Something that's new this year that we have not been able to fill, we're in the promotion, uh, the time of the recruitment right now is for the non-voting youth member. When the council redid the policy this last year, they added a non-voting um, youth member to each of the commissions. So that'll be an interesting voice um, when we do have that individual seated. One other thing I did want to share with you is um, Tim Curley, who was the um, appointment from Council Member Dean had some changes in his personal uh, life, his, his own, uh, anyway, he had to resign. So he actually will not be joining us. So we will also be filling an additional appointment as well as the um, at-large person, uh, the alternate as well. He also was the at-large individual. So um, and some of the things that the um, Cultural and Fine Arts Commission is responsible for. Um, you assist, assist existing community arts and cultural organizations by encouraging and promoting cooperation among them. Um, you advise the city on matters. I'm not going to read these verbatim. Um, advise the city on matters affecting arts, culture, and aesthetics in the city. Um, this is something we haven't done, but we're going to be looking at the public art policy as well as a couple of different projects. Um, so we'll be uh, establishing and revisiting the inventory of city-owned art um, that's across the city. It's not much, but it's probably more than you think. <laughs> um, so when, a pro when requested by the council or the appropriate commission, um, offer advice on cultural and um, arts, cultural and aesthetic matters relating to schools, um, quasi-public buildings, cultural facilities, and site developments, site developments in the community. One of these, a good example, was in, oh gosh, um, well, when the public library went in, they, um, the, the commission was involved, as well as there was a statue in front of Best Western that the arts 
commission actually had input into. Um, so most of you are familiar, and Morgan, you may, I'm sorry, Commissioner Monson, you may be as well. Um, the commission is very involved in the uh, temporary art when we have, when the museum brings those projects forward um, in the plaza and, off and Depot Park. Um, the organized advisory and resource com um, subcommittees from among its membership um, in conjunction with other interested individuals or organizations um, receive and review the city's draft annual budget and make recommendations as they pertain to the commission's functions. Um, so as I said, some of these things are things that have not been done in the past because they, and well, we'll get into that in just a second. Um, initiate requests and solicit grants, donations, and gifts to help support the commission's approved activities. And I know this is an area in the past that we have talked about um, and looking what that looks like to get grants and contributions and donations. The um, Commission is responsible for awarding two very special awards annually. Those include the Treasure Artist. Um, that was first awarded in 1983. And that person is selected um, and recognized for their outstanding achievement in their chosen medium or art form. These can, in the past, we've had filmmakers, we've had um, artists, we've had um, sculptors, um, dancers, um, theater. This year our treasure artist, Jamie Love, is the theater um, individual director and performer at the community center. Um, the other item is the Student Creative Artist Award. It was first created in 1988 and has gone through several um, iterations of what that looks like. It started as an honorarium and now we annually name a student the Cultural and Fine Arts Commission uh, names a one student artist that receives a award for $2,000 and they go through a application process that we'll talk about in one of the future agenda items. Um, that being said, when there is a surplus in funds, say we don't spend as much on the treasure artist, um, in the past we have been able to, or the commission has been able to award additional um, merit awards to other students that um, weren't the uh, main person. So just some general information. Um, we will deliver the packet electronically um, and that occurs as soon as possible um, prior to the meeting date. Obviously um, we're going to be talking about our meeting schedule as well for the year and so um, you'll have those packets, those, those will be considered regular meetings and you'll have those packets at least 72 hours prior to the meeting. Um, we, you know, any questions that you have regarding an item on the agenda, I would ask that you contact myself or Lisa prior to the meeting um, so that we, if not, are able to answer it ahead of time, we are at least prepared to answer it at the meeting. Um, Attendance, so this is something that we haven't really talked about, but it is something that's going to be, um, it's gonna be brought up, you'll hear it again if you're attending the orientation on Thursday. The municipal code says, if a member of the commission fails to attend the regular or special meetings for three consecutive meetings or one third of any calendar year's meetings, their seat on the commission becomes vacant automatically without any declaration to that effect and shall thereafter be filled as any other vacancy. Upon request by commissioner, the council may waive the attendance rules due to special circumstances. And this has been done in the past. Um, so that is something that we'll be keeping attendance and as if someone isn't able to attend, uh, then please get in touch with me. You know, usually everyone's very good about that. but. Some of the other things is these meetings are conducted under um, Rosenberg's Rules of Order um, and all commissions and committees as well as the council are uh, handled under this, under these rules. Um, also subject to the Brown Act, um, the Ralph and Brown Act is basically the open meeting to make sure that we are conducting the meetings in an open, transparent way. It also uh, talks about you know, interaction between the commissioners and a quorum and um, where you can get yourself into what we call a Brown Act violation. <laughs> You've heard me say that a lot. Um, and there is, and I'll get 
through your binder in just a minute. Conflict of interest, this is something that you don't, as this commission, you don't have to file a Form 700 or Statement of Economic Interest any longer, um, but you still have to be aware if they're gonna, if we start doing projects in the community and you're gonna have a um, financial uh, interest, thank you. Can you just use maybe SIF? SIF is a good one. Yes. When did you SIF? Well, I, I think if, I mean, I'm just not that this would happen, but if SIF um, asked you to participate as a um, commissioner and you were awarded a ticket to attend, I think that's when we start getting into those conflict of interest um, items and then there need to be a discussion in advance of you taking the free ticket to attend. So um, other items, I'm trying to think. Well, if there was a project, say, where we were going to be placing an art sculpture in front of your business, right. and it was going to um, benefit you by bringing individuals to your business, you could have a potential conflict. And that would be something that um, you might be, and nothing that you can, you know, we can never say you can't do it, um, but it would probably be something that I would say, you know, you might want to consider recusing yourself on this item. Mm -hmm. um, but those are some things. and. In your, that talks about that, we can get into more of that um, individually if someone wants to talk about that, um, because this is kind of an o more of an overview. But I do want to point out, each of you have a binder that we've put together. And in your binder, it includes, um, starting at the very front of it, you'll see the commission handbook that the city attorney put together um, that discusses Rosenberg's Brown Act um, conflict more in depth. Um, you'll see a, the second section is a commission roster. Um, the information on there is not for public dissemination, so don't give that out, don't share it. That's for your information. But don't call two or three people and talk about something. <laughs> because if you do more than, and right now, um, you have a quorum of three because you have only six members. So. If you, um, it's a little bit weird because you have three, you have six right now. So it is, it's a little bit different because you have actually a quorum would be, yeah, that's weird when it's a, it's a four, it's four, it'd be four. Yeah, it'd be four or three. I'd have to look at that to see what that is. Uh, when will uh, Tim Curley be replaced? If the recruitment's already open. Um, if you know anyone that closes on the 13th of um, March, if you know anyone, have them apply um, because we were already we already had it open for the alternate. So it definitely, if you like, I said, recruit. <laughs> I spoke to someone today about being an alternate. So okay. Yeah. Well, now we have the open position as well, and it can be a valley person or a resident in city resident it can be either okay th that was my question whether or not they had to be a city resident yeah. Yeah, this one's pretty open um, in your binder the second one the third one is the public art policy um, the city did adopt a public art policy in 2009 um, it's something that um, the I have a feeling that you're going to be asked to review and um, update, look at that. Um, so that'll be coming back to you at a future agenda. Um, next in your, the next thing is the, I believe it is the treasure artist. Mm -hmm. um, includes just kind of some of the, uh, you know, just parameters of that. That is one that I would suggest that the commission take up and look at the process and see if it's still working. We haven't done that since 2018. Um, in the next you'll find there's also a list of the treasure artists that have been um, awarded that. The next tab is a um, student artist. Um, that includes the information from the last, last year, the ad hoc committee did that. That has the new matrix, uh, it has the new information. Those are all for your reference. Um, the next tab is the Rosenberg's Rules of Order. You'll see a cheat sheet um, as well as the more in-depth information. And then lastly, you have the publication from the League of California Cities, Open and Public, which is the Guide to the Brown Act. 
um, it's written in a much more understandable way than the actual legislation. So I would encourage everyone to become familiar with that. Um, again, if I would encourage you also to, if you um, are available, attend the um, orientation on Thursday because it's always a very good in-depth um, reminder if you've had it before. So with that, that it concludes my report on this item. If anyone has any additional questions or would like information, I'd be happy to answer that. Do you have a question, Lisa? Yeah, um, the other thing that didn't get covered is you are not expected to, but we really highly like when our commissioners participate in the 4th of July. So this is mostly for Morgan, um, but we do um, have a parade entry for the Cultural and Fine Arts Commission. We don't do this for all the commissions, but uh, this one we do. And we invite the treasure artist to participate in that event as well. So um, in my mind, that's honoring our treasure artists. So it's so always mm -hmm. put that on your calendar if you haven't done it yet. Any other comments from the commissioners? Are there any public comments or Zoom comments? No, Chair Hagstrom, there are not. Okay. Well, with that, we'll move to the next agenda item. Uh, this is 1.5. This is the discussion regarding the 2023 Treasure Artist Reception. Oh, we're going to come. I jumped ahead, sorry. We're going to start. We're go, going back to 1.4, discussions, consideration, and possible action regarding a 2023 annual calendar. City Clerk, do you have some comments? I do, thank you. So currently the Cultural and Arts and Fine Arts Commission does not have a regular, we don't have regularly scheduled meetings, but the business that the commission has um, done over the past, kind of by your charge with, with uh, the treasure artists, the student artists, it's really been kind of driven by what event is happening. Um, and it, the meeting in, I believe it was in November of last year, there was a discussion about moving forward with regular meetings um, that we would set a regular meeting calendar. The municipal code actually says that the uh, commission will meet at least um, once each calendar quarter, so as a minimum four times a year. Again, that's been driven a little different for your commission because of the um, events that you, what you do. Um, so in order to make sure that we're meeting the requirements that, we're, that are set forth in the code, we'd like to establish an annual calendar. Um, and looking at that, um, just when looking at this room, we actually have nine different bodies now that meet in this room every month. So the days are limited as to when it's available. Um, right now we have Mondays, um, the second and fourth Tuesday, and the second Thursday of the month are available. And it can be noted that you can always set, if you start with um, a quarterly meeting, it can always be added to either at a regular meeting, you can schedule a regular meeting, or we can always call a special meeting as needed. Um, so with that, mm -hmm. that's the request of the of staff. And I'd be happy to take any questions. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll start with, um, do the commissioners have any comments about a calendar that um, you know, either meets or exceeds the um, the one meeting per quarter minimum. Um, how do we feel about a monthly meeting? Is that too much? Deb Emerson? Um, I, I think monthly could be done, especially given the additional types of things that we would like to accomplish on the commission that we've, we've spoken about in previous months. Um, but I would recommend maybe if we were able to take um, July and August off just for vacations and that would still meet the quarterly uh, requirement if, if that would be uh, considered. Yeah, I would agree that we'd need to meet more frequently while we plan for treasure artists and plan for the student award and um, there may be other art projects that are 
you know, getting prepped before our summer uh, season. Um, yes. So Zoom is out, right? A person tra that's traveling that might not be able to make a meeting? So with the new law, as of today, the emergency declaration ends, and we are back to, which also means um, that we are back to old Brown Act pre-COVID, or we're under, I think it's AB 2449, 2448, 2449. That allows, so with the old Brown Act, um, individuals, as you did Commissioner Schleling at the last meeting, were able to note where you're attending from on the agenda. You have to post it where you're at. It has to be available to members of the public. If someone in Utah wanted to come and join the meeting, you would have to let them. <laughs> um, there's some different, you know, there's some very, all, all votes have to be taken by roll call. Um, you know, there's some things that you can do. I don't know, it's a question for me on that is I don't know if there's a limitation on how many of those meetings. It's been so long since we've been under the regular Brown Act. Honestly, I've forgotten if there is a limit. Under 2449, there is a, um, it allows for two meetings a year that a commissioner, if they're traveling for, there's very explicit reasons. If you're traveling for business, if you um, have an issue, like health issue, or child care, um, those are the three that I remember. There's multiple pieces to that um, that you can attend remotely, but a, core, a majority of the board has to be in the chambers in order to do that. Um, so there are some pieces. It definitely will take some um, advance notice, um, but for right now, yeah, it is definitely, we're, we're back to the old Brown Act. All right, um, so back to the calendar. Um, so we have a consensus that we, we may want monthly meetings. Um, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so here we are at the beginning of March. Uh, does anyone have any suggestions on a monthly meeting that we can uh, take this room either any Monday, the second or fourth Tuesday, and the third was the third Thursday? It's the second Thursday, but I will ask selfishly, do not pick that date if you're going to do these monthly because that's my council agenda preparation. You got it. Okay, so any comments about um, Mondays or the second or fourth Tuesdays. Mondays don't work very well for me. I, I didn't hear you. Monday, Monday, or Mondays are not ideal, okay. like Garfield. Yeah, I would definitely uh, prefer a Tuesday as well. Okay. Um, but I also would like to reiterate my request that we do take some summer months off. I would like to ask if we could be earlier rather than at six. Mm -hmm. I was also going to ask if it's usually at six o'clock or if that's just coincidental this week. Staff? That is actually a time that has been set across all commissions. Um, I would have to talk with the city attorney and the city manager if there's any reason why this, because we are, and everybody is getting the same. So I will have to ask, and we'll also have to ask the individuals who stream the meetings. Okay. Um, one consideration, if, if we do decide on Tuesdays, whether it's the second Tuesday or the fourth Tuesday, the second Tuesday may be better for holiday schedules and you know, given that there's Thanksgiving, there's Christmas, there, you know, those types of holidays that tend to get really busy. Mm -hmm. Well, another thing is just, so today is the fourth Tuesday of February. Um, we could continue the fourth 
Tuesday of March and have today being the beginning of that. However, I think we have the Treasure Artist reception coming up, which is on March 30th. And so perhaps the second Tuesday of March, uh, March 14th would be appropriate so we could get together and make sure that um, our agenda is um, ready for the Treasure Artist um, at, um, you know, um, party or presentation. Any comments on that? Sounds reasonable. Okay. Yes. Tuesdays are just difficult for me in general, especially in the summer months, because I am working the farmer's market. Um, mm. But you would be in very capable hands of Miss Rebecca Barr. Um, but just something else to kind of note as far as a conflict. It's only one Tuesday a month, but um, mm -hmm. just... Well. <laughs> Well, and when does Farmer's Market begin? It starts in May and ends uh, in September, end of September. Um, would it be okay if we plan the next meeting for the second Tuesday of March, the 14th, and then used that as an agenda to discuss additional meetings? Uh, I will just so everyone knows, be in Mexico on that Tuesday. Okay. I but other than that, second Tuesday works for me. Yeah, it's spring break for our school oh, district. Oh, okay. It's that week, so. Um, well, um, you know, we certainly have Mondays available. Um, you know, is there a Monday between now and March 30th that works for everyone on the commission? Yes? Do we need a full meeting? for the, um, to get ready for the treasure artist reception? I'm not sure what you mean by that. You do have to have, like always, we have to have a meeting in order to discuss that. Um, one thing I was gonna bring up and I'll, it, when we talk about the treasure artist is the um, last year you had an ad hoc committee that did a lot of the planning and then brought in, we came in and did updates. Maybe, you know, we'll talk about that. Maybe something you're interested in doing again. Um, the, I mean, we can do other days. We can do a special meeting at another time, like earlier in the day. I know that's hard for some of you. Um, or different, you know, a different time for a special meeting. That doesn't have to be a meeting that you set tonight. It would be helpful if we had that. And then we can table the annual calendar to the next, um, to, you know, to our next meeting, to that meeting. I will say fourth Tuesdays are also very difficult because that's also a long week for us with city council meetings mm -hmm. because we have multiple meetings that staff is also doing. If my aversion to Mondays is throwing a muggy wrench into things, I can figure it out. Go ahead, Deb. Um, Mondays would be difficult for me as mm -hmm. well. Okay. Feels like Tuesdays are the least difficult. I think Monday holiday schedules make things difficult and we could be missing quorums a lot with Mondays. So Tuesdays, despite the fact that farmers markets go on for 20 some weeks, um, it, if we took off for several summer months, that reduces the problem. And if we look at time of the day, that might work for the commissioners and the staff. Maybe we could find a sweet spot. I agree that second Tuesday is sounding the best for everyone. It, if I may, I just have a quick question for the commission. Um, if we were able to go to an earlier time, I know some of you work full time, most of you do. Um, what would that look like for you? Go ahead, Deb. Yeah, that's what I was just going to ask. Um, I mean, I could be as early as 4.30 or 5, so I don't know what, mm -hmm. what other people's schedule is, if, it, if it's on Tuesday. I could pull it off. I could also meet before or later on a Tuesday. Okay, and I'm flexible? Okay. Well, 
it sounds like this might want to be tabled for further discussion and maybe ideally we just focus on the next meeting with the concept of maybe the second Tuesday being something we would adopt but at this point um, could we just select Tuesday the 14th as our next meeting and then use that as an agenda um, to discuss the 2023 calendar? Yes, Chair Hagstrom, you could do that. Okay. So if that's um, understood, our next meeting would be at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, March 14th, and the agenda item would include discussion of the 2023 calendar, discussion pertaining to a time change to perhaps 5 p.m., um, and a break for the summer months, um, and then any other contingency that would come up between now and then regarding the farmer's market and staff requirements. So, do I need to make a motion? You don't need to make a motion okay. to set a date. Okay, then we'll set the date uh, of our next meeting for March 14th at 6 p.m. So, I think that will conclude item 1.4. Um, unless there are any other questions from staff or comments, okay, any other questions or comments from our commissioners? From the public? From Zoom? No, Chair okay. Hagstrom. Great. So we'll move right on to dis discussion item 1.5, discussions regarding the 2023 Treasure Artist Reception. Um, City Clerk has a verbal report. Yes, yeah, so as um, you're all aware, I believe we did set the reception date for Jamie Love, our 2023 treasure artist, to uh, Thursday, March 30th, beginning at 6.30. Um, ticket, we've, uh, the ticket portal is open. Um, I don't know if we have an idea of how many tickets we've sold to date. Um, and we do sell them because it covers the costs um, associated with the um, reception. Um, we, as that being said, we are going to hold it <coughs> at Andrews Hall. <coughs> excuse me, at the Sonoma Community Center. And um, I know Lisa's been working on some of the logistics. I don't know if she has some additional information. I actually have just questions um, in because I actually haven't had a discussion with um, the treasure artist Jamie Love so I guess my first question is how do we envision um, the use of the room will she be wanting to do a tribute to her? will her team and staff want to do a tribute to her are we looking at doing um, something on the stage I know when Cynthia Tar our previous treasure artists and we held the um, reception in the same venue, um, there was a little tribute that her um, choir group had, choral group had put together for her. So I, I just need some understanding of, of if any of those details have been worked out. And if not, that's fine. I can put out, put a phone call out. Well, I don't believe any of those details have been hammered out because I had a conversation via text with Jamie sort of asking those same questions. but. What we do know is that there is a boilerplate of actions and activities that we have um, as far as uh, city council or the mayor or even our county supervisor may have representatives that, mm -hmm. that come up and, and will give speeches and plaques, etc. So there's a boilerplate of activities. It's just what will Jamie do as, a, as to present herself? And with one conversation early on, she thought, well, maybe she would bring back the Defying Gravity Girls, which is a little a band or a vocal group um, that sings songs from all along the lines of the Andrew Sisters style. 
but she hasn't confirmed that. But I would imagine there would be something like that, or there could be other members of her uh, troupe that could perform either scenes or musical numbers that would honor her treasure artist statesmanship. So until I speak with her, um, I really don't have anything concrete to tell you. Do you have any questions? I just had a statement. Um, it's the 40th anniversary of the treasure artists. Mm. So I think that's kind of neat and significant. Sure would be fun if we could have all of them and find a way to get some funding for them because I know tickets are an issue. So, but it's just worth noting and thinking about because mm -hmm. we have a very arts positive council and um, I, I'm sure that they, and it's just across so many organizations that these awards have been given that it's significant. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that the Andrews Hall will hold about a, 100 people on the main floor in seats um, and 40 up in the balcony. And that doesn't really allow much room to gather. Um, there has been events there that they take out the uh, about 60 seats in the front section, which you know would allow more you know milling around and, and elbow time. But then if there was a performance, you have all these people standing. Um, so I think the details are probably you know yet to yet to come from Jamie. I would say that we would leave all the chairs in place and maybe spill out into the hall like we did with Cynthia Tarr or David Aguilar. Yeah. So that's what we did in the past. We did spill out in the hall. The uh, wine service was out in the hall, and I think all the food might have been in the, the kitchen. kitchen area. Mm -hmm. So, And that seemed to work fairly well, and we were able to then accommodate more than 100 people. So... Um, but it also goes back to, and I think Rebecca will probably cover this as we start to put together the program and the timing of things. It's like we need to have an understanding of of um, what part Miss Love is going to play in this mm -hmm. in this program. That's definitely we'll need to hash that out, and that leads to the question that I had is if the commission wanted to have an ad hoc committee again um, I believe last time I know I think Steve you were on that and Connie was it Deb that was on that um, and that seemed to work well I don't know how um, Ryan I know Morgan or, I'm sorry I gotta quit calling you guys by your first names um, I know you weren't here at the time I did that feel I don't know how that felt as someone who wasn't on that ad hoc committee um, they did a great job. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that may be something that you want to do again so that we don't run into this issue of Brown Act violations with having four or five individuals trying to get together and do, a, you know, uh, make plans because that does, as hard as it seems, it does make a Brown Act violation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that's a question to the commission, um, and you can appoint that ad hoc committee tonight if you so choose. Um, and with that, and then we'll go through, as you said, we will do have a boilerplate of the program that we've used. Mm -hmm. um, the chair it, uh, runs that through, and we have invited the typical or the normal dignitaries, the Board of Supervisors, um, our Board of Supervisor representative, the uh, legislators, the council. Mm -hmm. And so there will be pr um, presentations, typically. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the, you know, the Cultural and Fine Arts Commission will be um, introduced and, uh, you know, the presentation will be made from to the new treasure artists, the past treasure artists introduced, and then usually we have about a 40, it's usually I think about a 45 minute, 30 to 45 minute program that we allot to the individual. Um, Pat Meyer Johnson last year did her lovely um, presentation and if you haven't seen it the, they did a video afterwards her and her husband Russ produced a video of her presentation and did some uh, 
narration over the top, Pat did, and it's posted on her Treasure Artist page. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you do, because it is quite lovely. Mm -hmm. um, and so these are, those are some, like I said, that's the main question I think I have tonight, is this, is this the commission would like to appoint an ad hoc committee to work with staff? Okay. Well, thank you. Um, I think that's a great idea. It's something we've done before, and it makes sense that we can make decisions outside of having a regular meeting or a special meeting. So um, some of the areas that we need to discuss in an ad hoc might include like food and beverage, um, but and I think that is a staff responsibility. So do we need to have an appoint appointee to the ad hoc committee that is Know, savvy with food and beverage or is that something that, that is handled by staff so I I will be taking care of the food and beverage but I will need um, a good attendance number typically it's five days prior to the event so just so that that gets on everyone's calendar and I think one of the just to add to all the the discussion around this. I think the other thing that would be really helpful is helping to get the word out about the treasure artist. I think the marketing that's been in our newsletters, it's on our calendar, um, but getting the word out to the community is really important. I think in our discussions with Jamie and maybe at the community center level, Steve, is there some partnerships that can get worked out with the community center to help us get this promoted? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe on their their outdoor kiosks that they have or something right. to that effect. I know they do a, a regular radio show as well. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe a, we can open this up to discussion within the, the commissioners to find certain skills that might lend themselves to supporting an ad hoc committee. Um, you know, or, And so I'll just start with myself. My skill set that could support a position on the ad hoc committee is I could support the technical elements of the presentation, you know, microphones, any kind of audio visual, um, as well as being able to promote the the event um, within the theater uh, groups that I'm associated with, um, as well as just I have ties to Sonoma Arts Live, and um, it's sort of maybe a natural fit that I would be part of that, um, but I. Maybe we'll open that up to discussion to see if anyone has any, you know, interest or special skills that would lead themselves to participate at that ad hoc level. And we'll just look for a raise of hands. Yes. Um, marketing, social media, uh, press releases. Um, I've just joined the board of the Sonoma Community Center. Oh. So I will be me meeting with the ED and the president of the board tomorrow so I can mention that we would need that kiosk perhaps or something, a leaderboard of some kind. So I'm happy to help with social media and marketing and reaching out to newspapers. That's awesome, okay. I'm happy to lend my graphic design skills again. I don't nice. give, I will, I will try to give Rebecca more than 30 minutes notice when I deliver it. <laughs> okay, Ryan. Does anyone else like to contribute at, at, at what level? I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, since we don't have enough members and we have a problem with ad hoc committees being three, are we in that circumstance right now? I think thinking about it, a quorum of six is actually four because it's half plus one. So I think you're okay with having four individuals. And just just to clarify, the fact that you're not on the ad hoc committee does not mean that you don't participate in, as Ryan, um, our Commissioner Small said, you know, his graphic um, arts piece. What that means is that you're not part of everyday discussions, and if something comes up in the past before we came up with this concept, in the past it'd be like, oh, we have to make a decision about this. We have to have a special meeting right now. And that was, it's the the day-to-day -day logistics. That doesn't mean you're not involved. Um, if you have something you want to do, you can always contact through staff. You just have to be cognizant of the fact that you can't be part of that everyday discussion with outside of that, if you're not part of that ad hoc committee. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. 
So, do you have a question? Um, more a statement. I would think our ticket sales would go pretty well with the amount of people that are supporting her nomination and um, you know the level of support that the theater community has. So obviously we need to get the word out, but mm -hmm. it may be a little easier. Mm -hmm. well, okay. So back to the ad hoc committee. Um, so it sounded like we could have as, as many as four, but certainly everyone is open to participate at any level. Um, so I'll pass it back well, maybe to Commissioner Emerson. Do you have any interest in being in the ad hoc committee and the skills that you could bring? Uh, probably not the ad hoc, but uh, definitely the night of the event. I'm happy to work okay. the, the ticket um, entry and I've done that in the past, but uh, just getting back from a month of vacation, I'm working quite a bit right now, so um, probably the next couple of weeks I'm not as available. No one escapes the event. Yeah, Everybody no, gets a job at the event. It's like 4th of July. Um, and Commissioner Mor McMo sorry, Momsen. I'm happy to help in any way. I can't think of a specific skill I can bring at this moment. I will be gone for a week in in March. Okay. All right. Well, um, then maybe we'll just select the three members that um, suggested they could be part of the ad hoc committee, and that's myself, Steve Hagstrom, this is Connie Schleinlin, and Ryan Small. So we will just make that up, not an appointment, but announcement so we're going to take that in the form of a motion okay and then you'll need a second and we'll do a roll call okay i would like to make a motion to form an ad hoc committee consisting of schleyland hagstrom and small do i have a second 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 is heard any staff comments comments from the public zoom comments Commissioner comments. Okay, then the motion is passed. Let's vote on it with a roll roll call. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Emerson. Yes. Chair Hagstrom. Yes. Commissioner Momsen. Yes. Vice Chair Schilling. Yes. Commissioner Small. Yes. Thank you. The motion carries five one. Okay. All right. So we'll um, we'll depart from item 1.5 with regards to the treasure artists. We've decided to have an odd ad hoc committee that will work between now and our next meeting, which is March 14th. And during that time, we will work with Jamie Love and interested parties on uh, finding the exact. Uh, schedule and the, the mechanisms to make this a, a wonderful event. So with that, I'll leave item 1.5 to the ad hoc committee and we'll move on to item 1.6, discussion of the 2023 Student Creative Artist Award and schedule. And I'll first ask city staff if they have anything to comment on with regards to the student artist award program thank you chair hagstrom so the student creative artist award was first created in 1988 and it was an honorarium at the time um, it's interesting when you look at the history it's basically the history has basically been put together through minutes of the city council so there's a lot of um, not a lot of documents from that time um, in 1994-95, it was changed to the Steve Silver High School Honorarium. And then in 2002, um, the City of Sonoma took over the funding and it became the Student Creative Artist Award. Um, there is, as we discussed earlier, there is one award of $2,000 that is given um, to an individual. And if there's a surplus in the budget of the commission, um, from after ticket sales and the cost of the parade, 
the attendance in the parade, and then also the um, treasure artist reception pieces that aren't covered, then the commission, if they feel someone deserves it, they can issue a, um, a merit award. Um, in the past, I think it was in 2020, you had I think, two individuals who received $500 each um, and for a merit award. Um, the commission felt that they deserved that. Um, the award is um, open to high school juniors and seniors who reside within the Sonoma Valley Unified School District. Um, and in 2002, or 2022, um, the commission had an ad hoc committee work on looking at this program and changing the way the scoring was done, the application process was done. I think it went extremely smoothly this last year. We started a online application process um, and I would suggest that we continue that program. And it makes it easy for staff to gather it and then also send it to the commission. Um, I would, at the end of my report, I would like to hear how that was for those of you who participated in that, what it looked like in receiving that information, the um, submissions. Uh, we, the, as part of that application process, um, which they do through the city's website, they have to submit an application with a two to 500 word statement explaining the role that arts played in their lives, what their plans are for the future and can, for continuing their artistic training. They also have to submit examples of their work, um, depending on what discipline they're submitting for. And it's, I was actually really impressed with the application last year because um, it actually was, um, gosh, what's the word? Um, it changed depending on what discipline you uh, submitted intuitive. for. Intuitive. Thank you. It changed what the requirements were for what you had to submit. Um, and you didn't notice that unless you were looking for it. So it was very smooth. Um, typically, we have the, um, we have an interview that they are required to participate in, in person with the commission. And the winner is typically chosen in March. Uh, but the this year, last year, it was delayed due to the pandemic. And this year it was delayed with seating the new commission. We didn't know who was gonna be on the commission up until February 1st or until January 23rd. So staff kind of looked at a timeline and suggested the following timeline. This is obviously not set in stone. Um, it would suggest that we release a press release um, on March 2nd calling for student artist submissions. Um, we would have April 7th as our submission deadline and looking at April 24th through the 27th through for interviews, one of the dates during that time period. And I was just going to ask um, sir, Lisa, because I know that now there's a second spring break in April. It's earlier. Okay, it is earlier. Good, I did catch the right. I was hoping I ca captured those dates accurately. So with that, if the um, commission has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Other than that, it would be looking to the action tonight would be to set a timeline for the um, program for the creative artist. Okay, thank you. Um, you did ask a question about um, how the submittals went um, last year, and I thought that we did get some good candidates, but not as much outreach in the different disciplines that we have received before, and so I would hope that when we do make, when we promote the student award, we can try and do a little bit better and with the outreach and like the filmmaking pro program at um, the high school didn't offer up any uh, candidates. Um, and maybe working closer with the authors group that does some, some writing or, you know, other ideas. Yes? I've spoken with several um teachers and they missed some things last time and they're on it and so um, but I, I will use my network of teachers as much as I can um, and getting these deadlines is really great I would like to I, I'm really happy about the deadlines especially uh, we need to reach out to the high schools to let them know about um, the fact that we are giving an award so it could be included in the 
the end of the year um, uh, convocation that they do. And just if I may, just briefly in response to that, um, just so you know, the type of outreach that what we do is we send it directly to the art departments at the high schools in Justin Siena um, and in uh, Sonoma Valley, uh, the high school here. Um, and in the, there's another one, there's, I'll try to think what the other one is, that this, the private school in, these are what we've done in the past. We send those directly to the art directors. Um, I personally reached out to Peter Hansen, mm -hmm. the film, um, and I know he did receive it. He specifically told me he had chosen not to have people submit. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't remember what the reasoning was. There was some conflict for them. We also do press release. We put it out through the website, we, social media. And those are through our news and um, news notices that go out bi-weekly that continuously gets promoted. So it definitely is, we go through all the avenues that we have. So we definitely will ask that all of you promote that as well. Good. So then we can discuss, a oh, yes, Commissioner Emerson. Yes, I have a question for staff. You had um, mentioned release or recommended that we release on March 2nd. Submissions would be due April 7th, is that correct? Yes. So I'm assuming then if we do go with a second Tuesday meeting that we would be discussing then um, on Tuesday, April 11th, does that provide staff enough time to receive all the applications and to put them in a format in which that we can review? Well, in the past, you've actually looked at those and discussed them at the time of interviews, if I remember correctly, not ahead of time. Um, Is that right? No. no. Um, Am I missing that? Yes, we have sent them out as part of a staff packet for individuals to review. And before we had it digitally, they would actually come into the office and look at them in advance. I'm sorry, I meant at a actual meeting. They didn't come to a meeting of the commission and discuss those prior to the interviews. Correct. You would have access to do start your review, and then at the actual meeting interview time, that's when you get to ask your questions, but you get the information in advance. And it being actually an online form, it makes it a lot easier for staff um, to, it's an export of data, and then I can format it in a way that I can get it to you. My question is to Rebecca. Um, Does it, so in the past, it, did we send it, is that Zoom? Are we gonna be able to do Zoom meetings or Zoom interviews with individuals? We only allowed the Zoom the one time. Okay. And sure. with the one individual that was at college and we, last year it was decided that the interviews would be in person. And it was, it is a, it's made available because we have to make anything that the commission sees or even like this goes with any of our legislative boards as part of the Brown Act, that has to be made available to the public at the same time. So you may have noticed last year, I don't know if you did, it was actually, the link was actually posted on our city website so that individuals in the public could review that as well. Are the interviews, do they have to be televised? It's a regular meeting of the commission or a special meeting. Um, it is, we're tell us we're streaming meetings now so it would be it's a, it's an interesting process but it would be streamed i'm a little concerned about students and privacy issues um, with the interviews for the students well anyone can come into a meeting it's a public meeting so they you know it's something that what we can do is I understand the concern. Um, we regularly have students that come and approach the council and speak, um, and they are televised. It is streamed. Um, the If it would make the commission more comfortable, we can let them know that those interviews will be televised. Uh, and I can talk with the city attorney to see if there's anything because someone may be a minor um, but 
it's a public it's a public space so and also I think at either the winner or awardee is recognized in front of City Council and that is always a televised event so you have to you know so a second or a, a first introduction on television sort of accepted because you will do it again if you win and that's status quo <clears throat> but I think what um, Commissioner Emerson was talking about how we would get the submittals by April 7th and is that enough time for staff to prepare it for discussion on April 11th that's what I was saying it doesn't come on the 11th what the process is with these is you don't discuss them until after you interview the applicants oh, okay. if you remember in the past you receive them and then any questions that you have of staff you ask individually and then on, at the interviews you come in the individuals come in and conduct the interviews and then after the interviews are over the Commission discusses the um, applications and if I remember right there were finalists picked we picked finalists out of the applicate applicants Right. So we um, that was really important mm -hmm. because after we went through the rubrics and we've done it several different ways, but we went through and we each did our own scoring of um, each of the students and then we picked the top ones to interview. And I may be remembering that incorrectly because we did make a change last year. And I was just looking back to see, um, in the past we've always just had the meeting after the applicant. And I am now that you say that, I was just looking to see back what the, what that was. Um, as far as the ability to, um, no, we will not be able to have the submissions submitted on the 7th and ready for you on the 11th. And the reason for that is, well, hmm. I'm trying to think what day is that? Actually, I'll be out of town the week of April 10th. What was the date that we were trying to select the winner? When I looked at it, I was just looking at the week of the 24th through the 27th. And as I said, these are not set in stone. These are just looking at timelines. And, and that would be potentially, I mean, thinking that we would be conducting interviews that week. Is that correct? That would be the interview and selection. And if, if we follow your, um, the 25th of April, since that is a fourth that um, we have an extra week in April, the fourth Tuesday would be really, would be fine with, for me, it wouldn't have that council piece. So if that mm -hmm. works um, for the commission, you could do your meeting. And, and does it make sense then, the meeting and the interviews could be all the same time now right? that's what it is but if we go by what we did last year and I was just trying to and I apologize because it's I will just say it's been a long day and my brain is broken I think <laughs> um, the last the last time you did it in 2022 it was where you picked the finalists Let me think. And, they were invited. and they were invited to the interview the finalist was so if the committee wanted to, if the commission wanted to meet on the 11th and go through it, honestly, it would be whether that would be enough time for all of you to review the submissions from the 7th to the 11th, if you would be able to do that. We can make it happen, um, but it really depends on your schedule if, well, no, I'm not here the 11th, neither sorry, and neither is my 
assistant. We're actually at a city clerk's conference, but we could do the Monday because we leave Tuesday morning. So if the commission wanted to meet Monday the 10th on that mm -hmm. one meeting, or you could meet the following. Uh, the well, Monday the 10th doesn't give us. Well, it only it, it limits the amount of time. Now you could back up. Also, what happens if we don't get enough of submissions? So I feel well, kind of a little concerned of setting all the meetings. If well, in yeah, I mean it is a. It the last couple of years, I think. Well, then, if the commission would like to set the submission date, I mean, if you could change that, and then if with the contingency that if that there's not enough, um, you know, if there's not so many, then we're going to extend it. Um, and again, you may end up, it doesn't have to be in April. You could make the selection in May if you wanted to. I think it would be helpful to um, find out when, it, it, I mean, assuming it might be an SVHS student to when their awards are. I know they tend to be kind of early to mid-May. I was surprised at how early the scholarship um, a ceremony is for them but it would be nice if we could do something we've we've not been able to in the years past uh, give those students a recognition we could find out that date and work backwards but um, that leaves us I mean we really do need a, a timeline here well so what I'm hearing is uh, maybe we could push out the uh, date of April 7th by a week and maybe push out that meeting to April 25th, which would work. Um, is that enough time to, to pr promote this, to get submittals, to discuss and or review the packages? Um, and it, it seems to me that those dates would work. That it would be April 14th submittals and April 25th um, would be when we would select candidates to interview. That's, that's just what I was going to suggest is that. I agree that that makes more sense. And that also gives students in the district some spring break time to prepare a submission that's their second spring break i i would just say that with it being due on the 14th and then we need to review um how do we i mean are we saying that everyone that makes a submission would need to be available on the 25th because what if we choose not to interview everyone well what we've done no what we've did and i remember this now with is in the press release it said that the the interview date would be i believe it was i looked at that today i want to say it was actually june 2nd that we did interviews we set the interview date and let individuals know that they would anyone who was selected as a finalist would need to be available for that date for an interview so they were aware that they weren't going to everyone wasn't necessarily going to be interviewed but they had to make themselves available. So if you set, if you did the selection of the finalists on the 24th, set the deadline for the 14th, did the selections of the finalists for the 24th, 25th, 25th I'm sorry, um, you could move, you could set the interview date depending on when that award ceremony is, May 9th, which is your regular meeting time for interview, to interview. Mm -hmm if that looks like that works for everyone. Yes. Okay. So, okay. so we will send out the press release um, hopefully by March 2nd. <laughs> I've got council meeting tomorrow night, commissioner orientation on Thursday, so I will do my best to get that out. Uh, 
And then the deadlines for submissions will be April 14th with the um, consideration of the applicants and the selection of finalists on April 25th and the interviews on May the 9th. Okay. okay. I think we're seeing a lot of heads nodding and we agree that okay. schedule would work and I think that allows the students enough time from the date of the um, the action on what, March 2nd till April 14th. That's six weeks. So yeah. that's plenty of time to, get, to promote and prepare. And we will we will push it out in all of our channels, um, and we'll ask, as I said, ask all of you to do the same. Um, we'll get the press release out. Um, it's a standard press release. The language doesn't change, just the date. So it's pretty much I that'll be fine. I'll have no problem getting that, possibly even tomorrow. Okay. The the press release out to the group, out announcing the call for nominations. And and can you send that to us as well? Oh yeah, we will forward it. Okay, yeah, I'll call you. And then we can forward that to anyone. Okay, thank you. And something, and I don't know, and maybe it was more attractive. Um, in the past, we had a commissioner who was a graphics art, graphic person, <laughs> and she actually did a nice like call for call to artist poster um, that was sent out rather than just a press release to the schools. I don't know, maybe that would be something more palatable to draw in, you know visually, um, which I'm looking at Commissioner Small. Um, I can send you what was done in the past, and then if that's, if you guys are okay with that. Would that be something that we could, you know, piggyback to the same mailings? Well, that's, that's actually what I was thinking. Rather okay. than just sending the press release, I think you may be able to get more visually more pleasing to the students to see this nice call to artist poster i mean it was just an eight mm -hmm. and i can still send that to you um with the information and directing them to the city's website the other one thing too i just thought about this the one piece is we're going to have to update the whole site <laughs> so that may not be able to happen by yeah, but I'm going to do that that may stop us from sending it on by thursday um, because we do have to update all of the links and changing on the website, the application process. Hmm. Okay. One thing that is uh, working better is that many of the arts teachers in the county and the valley are meeting more regularly, and we're also working on a strategic plan for the school district. It's all art, dance, theater, music, um, media, so uh, people are communicating a bit more than they used to be. So we'll be able to network, I hope. Mm -hmm. I think we have our marching orders, unless okay. any other questions. And, but the one delay was that you have to work on the website before you can make the, so it just may push it to the second or third? Well, it's, we, it depends on how, because this is the first time we've had to make all the changes to the site where they apply. Mm -hmm. I do not want a situation where we have a very eager student that runs in and applies immediately and you know that maybe he's been ready. prepared for this and then it's gone because we have to change all the links. Mm -hmm. I'm, not sure. I'm not sure if I actually put dates on the form. There is a date. Is there? Yeah. Okay, so I just need to go up and update the forms. but. Okay. Yes. So I think uh, one way that you could alleviate that issue then is to simply say that um, I think you could get the press release and everything ready and then just say applications open and have a specific date, which may not be the uh, maybe a few days later than when you're actually advertising it. And, and I see that for college programs and stuff too. Like they'll talk about it and everything that goes into it and um, but that you can't actually submit until a certain date. Okay. Okay, so I think we've buttoned that issue up. Um, are there any other comments from the commissioners, from staff, from public, from Zoom? Okay. So we'll, we've ended our our agenda items, and we'll turn this over to staff for any comments 
for announcements. Are you going to? Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. If you want to share, go ahead. No. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, no, I just had a couple of things. Um, first, uh, how lovely if you look around, you'll notice the artwork on the walls. Um, this is a program that our mayor decided she was going to start with our um, revolving art in the council chambers. Um, and she started with our 2022 treasure artist, Pat Meyer Johnson. Um, they have been up since the second week of February, and I think we're going to uh, I think we're going to keep them up through the second week of March, and then we will be making a change to another group of artists, and um, I believe there are going to be some student artwork that's going to be displayed. This is something. This program is something that you will be becoming very familiar with because it is something that's going to land in your purview. Um, right now there is not a, there's not any parameters around it. It was just, hey, let's do this, let's get it done, and then we'll hammer out the details. Um, so this is something that you'll come forward. These first two um, showings were set with the mayor. Um, and full disclosure, Commissioner Shalaling has been asked to work on the second for March with the students. Um, and then in, this will be something that comes to you in your March meeting, um, because I don't know, we're having a meeting in March, March 9th, yes, sorry. Um, wait, no, are we having a meeting in March? March 14th, sorry. Um, so I don't know if it'll be that quick, um, because I don't think we're gonna be able to pull the pieces together, um, but it is something that, of how this is gonna go forward. Um, the, originally, the, uh, it was suggested that it be done monthly, um, but that's something that the commission can look at. Is the logistics of that really doable because the space is only open during meetings? Um, it's not as if we can just leave it, leave it open all of the time. Um, so there's just some things that to, to think about. Um, we did have a, for um, Pat Meyer Johnson, before the last council meeting, we had we did a notice of an open house um, where we just had the council chambers open. Staff was here for two hours, and Pat came um, and just waited to see if anybody. And she did have a visitor, so that was nice. Mm. Um, but it's just something. It's not a reception. It's not you know. There's not balloons or snacks or anything. It's just we keep it open so they can. But that's something that's going to come before the commission um, at a future meeting. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was I just, for myself, I just wanted to thank all of you for um, having your first meeting in um, Zoom or in, and in streaming. Um, I know that wasn't something we've done before and I appreciate everyone jumping on board with it and it's gonna be good going forward. And this meeting will actually be, as soon as I hit stop, it'll actually be posted on, attached to the meeting on our civic web portal. Um, so that's the way that works. Anything else? Okay. I just had a question for staff um, regarding the open positions. Mm -hmm. um, it's my understanding that we had other applicants that, however, were from the Valley. And so since there is a restriction that only one could be selected and then that person has resigned, has, have those applicant or applicants been notified? Definitely. First thing I did was reach out to the individual, and um, the individual was not interested in serving any longer due to some personal things. Um, so, at, when that, so that did exhaust our list. When the commission or the council changed the commission appointment policy the last time, um, we don't, the, the applications stay active. Um, so it is out. Again, I encourage all of you, if you know someone, please get them to um, go to the Civic Web Portal and apply. Okay. All right. Well, with that, um, it is 727, and we will adjourn the meeting.